Hi everyone, Jesse here with Can Perspective back uh, with another baby related video. Uh, sorry for the, um, uh, for being MIA, I had a recent surgery, I'm doing well, uh, but it has slowed me down a bit, so I've had to prioritize my time as I'm moving at 50% speed, really. You'd be surprised how much one hand slows you down. Um, so here we have a uh, question for Artie. Uh, Hi, Jesse. I know you did a series on bringing a baby home with a dog recently. I'm so excited for you that you're adding to your family this year also. Thank you very much. Uh, for those of you that, that know, you know, Elizabeth and I are expecting our first little one. Uh, we are also expecting a boy, so we're very happy about that. Um, I came home two weeks ago with my, my new little one and have been phasing Artie back from my parents' house by having him here for parts of the day. And last night was the first night back overnight. This has been more for me and managing them both than about him, okay? Uh, yep, bringing home a baby is a lot of work, uh, so you'd be surprised, um, you know, if you have a dog, like trying to balance your dog and taking care of your baby and all those things, it's, it's quite a bit of work, okay? So that all makes sense. My mom stayed over, and the few times she came into my room to bring me the baby, he popped up and gave a little whine and needed to get to me before she did. Once he was there, he still seemed pretty loose and wagging his tail, but it seemed protective, which I would like to discourage. He knows my mom well, but I have other night help for the next few weeks, and I don't want that to be more pointed because she's more of an outsider. Okay, so um, uh, one thing that I would, uh, would need to know is just how he was positioned. So if a dog is being protective, for example, if, if, I'm, if I'm here and uh, a person were to be approaching me and my dog Lexi were to, to be protective, typically they'll position themselves in between uh, where the person is approaching, okay? So then if the person is coming to me this way, my pit would either stand across like this or stand directly in front of me facing towards the person. Uh, potentially it could happen when the dog is facing you and you'll see them kind of looking back with suspicion. Uh, but when it's being protective, typically it's usually crossing and or facing. Or even they might, uh, they might even intercept the other person where you'll see them position, position themselves across the person, okay? Because they're trying to body block there. Um, here, potentially, uh, some things that I might be kind of picking up on is because she was bringing in the baby. Let's see, protect little. I'm also wondering is if he was just um, excited, interested, because uh, your mom was coming in with, with, with the baby, uh, so a new energy, so not just your mom, but your mom with another you know, uh, energy with her, and him kind of coming in, um, kind of the, the whining for me kind of comes across more excited, uh, and then like investigative, interested, right? Like, oh, what are we bringing into the room here? Um, I'm not picking up protective or territorial, and it's not to say that I can't be wrong, um, but just the context of and everything, I feel like it's more like him just, because uh, the baby's coming into the space and the baby, of course, is new. Uh, not sure how familiar he is with the baby. Um, is I think he was just kind of excited and then really just trying to see what's going on. Um, obviously, if there was hackles up, uh, growling, low posturing of the head, uh, staring, you know, things like that, like the, the real obvious signs of tension, I would definitely say you're looking at some kind of form of guarding here. Uh, but considering that your mom was also entering with the baby, if it was flipped and it was you with the baby and your mom entering and we saw some behavior, then I might start leaning towards protection territorial. Uh, but considering it was the other way around, I'm not really picking up signs of that here. Uh, but not to say uh, you shouldn't uh, keep your your uh, your wits about you. Really, when everything happens, uh, keep an eye on um, on Artie. Uh, make sure we're watching him closely so that we know that uh, uh, you know if somebody enters the room, and, or you see someone about to enter the room, or hear them about to enter the room. I would shift to the dog to look for any signs or changes in behavior, especially in this case where we have uh, a, a very uh, pronounced change in the home environment, which is the baby, okay? Uh, but I understand with the night help that you obviously don't want this to escalate, so I was much more focused on his behavior with the baby 
He is completely unfazed by her presence. Very good. Neither very interested nor avoidant. Uh, so that's actually pretty standard. Where you want to be mindful is when the baby starts to crawl or when the baby's in the, um, the walker. Uh, and also when the baby begins to walk, okay? So I guess the stages would be baby's in the walk, uh, in the, uh, begins to crawl, eventually baby's in the walker, and then ba ba eventually baby is walking, right? Is that's what we tend to see or are more likely to see signs of tension, uh, growling, avoidance, um, um, concern, things like that. So even though currently everything is fine, which I'm happy to hear that it's fine, that's where you really want to start being more mindful. Uh, and watchful of Artie and his behavior. Okay, obviously, like I mentioned earlier, hackles, um, concerned look in the eyes, uh, staring, posturing, low head, even like a stalking type behavior. Uh, anything that you see the dog do and you go, I'm not sure how I feel about that, is most likely your instinct telling you uh, your dog is showing, showing signs of tension and then we definitely want to address it, okay? Uh, Artie has never been particularly protective of me other than occasionally with my sister's bloodhound which is not uncommon, but it makes total sense that he's not interested in nighttime intruders coming over to me, but it makes total sense that he's not interested in nighttime. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the night help will only be here for three nights over the next four weeks. So he can sleep at my parents' house for those nights, or I can gate him downstairs at night to manage short term. But if you think this could roll into other settings, I want to make sure to address it now. Yeah. So, um, I'll go to finish this off as one more paragraph. Would you recommend using his collar to try and keep him in his bed or tap to discourage the behavior? The only issue is I'm generally asleep when they, they'd be likely lightly knocking on the door to come in or if the door is open, they'll walk in to get me so to get me up so I'm not exactly super ready in the moment. Yeah. So um, when it comes to the night help, and I, I, like this is a, a, a few things... It's a very easy answer. Um, it's just contextually what's going to be feasible. So uh, going back to earlier, I mentioned uh, uh, it sounds like you know you just brought your baby home, uh, so your baby's not mobile yet. Okay, but when the baby becomes mobile, that's where we start to anticipate signs of tension. Um, so we want to start preparing for that now. Okay, so uh, when it comes to the collar to correct him, um, the nights that you know that you're going to have night help coming over or guests coming over, uh, you know, some kind of change in the environment, I would recommend having already collared those times, okay? Uh, you can already have the collar preemptively set up. I usually have uh, tell my clients to go about 10 to 15 levels higher than their usual working level. So if your walking number for already, for example, is 25, I would at minimum be at 35, 40, because I want to get the point across immediately uh, I don't want to sit there and have to fiddle with the collar. So uh, if you're just a little bit higher, uh, the effect should be fairly immediate. Otherwise, if not, you're already a bit higher that if you start to increase it, you're that much closer to getting to the answer that's going to deter the behavior you're not wanting, okay? So the nights that you know that people are going to be coming over, you can have already with the collar on. Um, if they're not going to be over for a few hours, for example, you put the collar in at 8, but the night help isn't coming till uh, 11 o'clock or something, it's okay if a few nights a week already wears the collar a little bit longer than the hour and a half to two hours we recommend. Uh, remember, every one and a half to two hours, you'd want to rotate your collar. But because you're not going to be do doing this regularly or routinely or for extended periods of time, days over days over days, it's okay to do it every now and then. The concern is just the pressure sores. If you have a comfort adapter on Artie, uh, the comfort adapter helps alleviate that worry of, of uh, pressure sores producing excuse me, or, or not producing, but happening. Uh, comfort adapters, however, do muffle the power of a collar about a third. Okay, so if Artie's number is typically 30, it muffles by a third, so he's really feeling like a 20s, you wanna be more at around a 40-ish to, to, to compensate for that loss, okay? Uh, some dogs, it's rare, some dogs, are and, and they'll keep the same level of sensitivity, but more often than not, we see more of a, a loss in effectiveness about, about a third, okay? So, um, anything that you're wanting to discourage, yes, you can tap the behavior. And even though it's only going to be for the next four weeks, like for the next month, you're already establishing boundaries, but you're also already getting kind of information about Artie and how he's responding in these kind of low uh, intensity, these low, uh, we're not too worried moments, right? So remember, uh, you're, 
when you're, when you're using a remote collar, you're constantly getting information for the dog. So in this case, even though nothing's really happening, there's no, he's not, I'm, from right, when I'm reading right here, I'm not concerned right now, right? Because I'm not seeing anything that's telling me like you should be concerned right now. So that's good. So, but it doesn't mean we can't start addressing these things, being proactive, one, to try to avoid or prevent anything from happening, right? You're already setting the boundaries and the tone already. And then two, if something should change in the future, we're already is starting to show territorial behavior or tension or things like that, because you've already been doing it for this first month, when, if that situation happens to happen, um, you already have that much information. You already have that much, uh, that many rules set in place. So if you've been correcting Artie at 40 and then he becomes territorial and you're seeing signs of tension coming from him, well, obviously 40 probably isn't gonna work. You know you need to go higher than 40, right? But instead of you having to work your way up from 25 and then trying to figure out from there, you're already that much closer because you, you were operating at a higher number proactively that first month, okay? So remember, we want to plan for when the baby becomes mobile, right? I also do encourage um, you using uh, the place command, right? I believe you mentioned it here, uh, going to keep him on his bed, right? So there's two approaches here, your obedience approach and your behavior approach, okay? Your uh, obedience approach is if my uh, nighttime nanny is coming at 10 o'clock and um, uh, I want to have already under control prior at 9 9 30 he's already in his dog bed in the place command with the collar on maybe even with the leash to uh you know uh to give me a little bit more leverage proactively bump that number preemptively bump that number 10 to 15 levels higher than his typical correction number because you want to get the point across right away so when they come over I would say within a couple of nights if you've corrected him and, and he's taking it seriously you're going to knock it out right away so then you end up placing them prior to them coming over, and then you don't even have to do anything because already already knows if I break command, I'm going to get corrected at a higher number, and I don't want that to happen. Okay, so that would be the obedience approach. Obedience is what we is what we call preemptive control. Uh, you're establishing control prior to the problem happening, right? So most people want to uh, regain regain control when they've lost control. I want to have control before I lose control. Okay, that's the difference. So when you have already in place prior to your mom or prior to the nighttime nanny coming over, you're preemptively establishing that control to prevent a problem, okay? So that's one approach. The other approach would be the behavior approach would be Artie is not under command. He does have the collar on, you know, whenever you decide to put it on. Uh, the closer you can get it before the nighttime nanny comes over, great, because then you have to worry less about the pressure sores. Pressure sores aren't a big deal. They do heal up, the fur grows back, nothing permanent. Uh, but if you just want to have to not worry about that, uh, the closer you put the collar on prior to them coming over, the better. Otherwise, if you put the collar on at 8 o'clock and they don't come over till 10, 11 o'clock, that's perfectly fine. You know, you, you're resting. You have your collar preemptively set up. You have it immediately available to you. And if they come and they knock and already gets up and starts to charge the door or, or walk towards the door to investigate, you can start correcting them there to teach them this has nothing to do with you. Okay? Again, bumping as needed until you start to see already back away from whatever it is that you don't want them to engage with, whether it be the nanny or your mom or somebody entering the room, what have you. Um, I typically don't say anything, so I wouldn't say no or uh-uh, I would just correct the dog because I want already to learn uh, in these particular moments, you don't need to do anything here, this has nothing to do with you, okay? So then you'll see him just kind of naturally hang back. He might perk his head up to see like what's going on, but he's gonna hang back and not just kind of uh, uh, move towards the door to investigate, okay? So then if we fast forward, in the future, when the baby's mobile and stuff, if you're doing either one approach or a mixture of both approaches, uh, which doesn't hurt because you start to get a feel for how Artie's responding, is the place command is going to be very valuable when the baby starts moving. So then if I have Artie over here, for example, in the corner of the room in place command, and the baby's crawling over here, um, when I have boundaries, I have a space, um, uh, we can, you know... Um, I would just say redirect the baby if the baby's crawling towards Artie and all that stuff um, to see how he feels about it. Again, he could completely not care, which will make life a lot easier. If he does care, it's not out the ordinary. Uh, many times, once the, the, the baby uh, progresses into like the three to four year range where there are more um, 
they're more balanced with their walking because the what, what throws dogs off is they get used to the baby being um, stationary then the baby starts to crawl months later and the dog goes wait a minute that's weird like you weren't doing that before then they get used to that and then the baby starts to try to walk and the dog's like wait a minute you weren't doing that before that's kind of weird so they start to growl like all these things are normal we see it all the time okay it's very rare that that tension will stick and be permanent uh, but typically once the baby is, is you know is a toddler three to four years old um, more balanced a lot of that stuff starts to go away and the dog at that point tends to to have already warmed up to the child because it's had plenty of time more often than not. Again, it's not to say that that won't happen or that it will happen. Uh, you just have to play it by ear, but that's where boundaries and space will, will come into play, okay? So by proactively doing this now, in the future, should something come up with the baby, since you've already been doing it in other instances, again, there's not from, I'm not picking up any kind of emergency here, but I do recommend it so that this way in the future, should you have to address already for the baby or for place commands like that he doesn't break so the baby can just do its baby thing um he's already got a solid foundation of being corrected for this stuff and he's going to have a better idea of what to do as opposed to having to learn it in the moment okay um uh, just make sure i'm not missing anything here the other thing would be um do what you can uh, i do encourage taking this time to again just get ahead of things and start correcting stuff but if one night you're just tired and you can't do it like you can create already or put them i believe he's in, in downstairs gate him downstairs yep you know so like if one night you're just very tired and you just don't have the energy to like deal with putting the collar on already and all that stuff feel free to put them downstairs or you know that's that's perfectly fine uh because you're preventing the problem you're avoiding creating the situation that again is all fine um and then the nights that you are up to applying these things, then by all means, please do. Because again, you're just getting feedback and you're getting this information now. You're setting the boundaries now, setting up for the future in case there's any tension between Artie and the baby. And it's happened where dogs become protective uh, over the baby towards outsiders, right? So you're already kind of getting those things into play. So when you ask... Um, but if you think this could roll into other settings, I want to make sure to address it now. That's what I'm talking about, okay? The, 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 the good thing is, is the answers remain the same. It's just the context change, right? So everything that you're doing now with the nanny or your mom coming into the space with place command and or correction is pretty much the same stuff that we do when the dog starts to show attention towards the baby or if the baby starts to guard, or the, if the dog starts to guard the baby from outsiders, or if the dog starts to guard you and the baby from outsiders, but you know, there's all sorts of ways this can work. Um, there's no way, unfortunately, to predict. It's really just, you figure it out as you go along, um, but you're establishing the foundation now, which will help you in the future, okay? Um, make sure I'm not forgetting anything. Yep, I believe that's it. Um, again, from what you've sent me, I'm not picking up territorial behavior. Um, not to say that I can't be wrong stuff. If you're ever unsure of these things, you're always welcome to like, um, if you know what's going to happen, like your mom's going to walk in with the baby, you can film it and then you can email it to me and then I'll review it and then let you know if I also see signs of tension or territorial behavior, or if I just think he's just getting excited because, you know, the baby's coming into the room with, with your mom and stuff like that. Okay. But otherwise, uh, congratulations. And uh, if you need anything else, you know, just feel free to shoot me another email. Okay. Thank you.